There we go. And camera set. And three, two, one. And action. Greetings, stranger. Welcome. My name is Finlay. I'm the storyteller of this movie or story. You probably know and don't know me. But probably we heard about the name William Wallace. Who is Wallace? And what why well, I'm telling you this? Well, at first it's maybe we're very late, but I'm sitting here in this poor forest. You probably ask yourself what I'm doing. Well, you're in Scotland, my lad. The year is 305. The year that our great legendary patriotic hero was executed by the English! Oh, I need to keep it quiet. But let me tell you the great story about William Wallace and who he was. He was a great man, a legendary man, even a great legendary hero of Scotland, even of the history of Scotland. But let me tell you the tragical story that happened to him, and why I'm telling you this. He was born in 1270 in our country, Scotland, of Malcolm Wallace. Malcolm, his father, was a noble landlord, whose Wallace would live in the term tide of peace. And soon, if he would learn, he would see, see, soon see the faith of Scotland, when his country has been burned by the English. It was in the time that even the Englishman, Edward I, invaded our country, and it was even not so good, great as you think. So come and take a seat. And sit down when I'm telling you the story of the rise of William Wallace. It all happened many years before. In the year of 1286, Alexander III, the King of Scotland, had died. His wife, Yolanda de Drukes, was here, as the Bishop Robert Wishart blessed him with luck, fortune, and his glory. The new King, John Balliol, was looking at him with tears as the rest of those sisters and the monk and his own wife were laying on him. May God bless him in the name of our people. He invited Edward I of England, who was then even crowned as a new king of England, by John Balliol. But Balliol's mistake was that he trusted the Englishman as the English king more than he could even think about. He blessed him for he trusted him more than he could expect, because this king of England, Edward Longshanks, in his long legs, was not to be trusted as he thought he was. Farewell, my brother. I shall miss you. Farewell, Alexander. Albaku brav. Farewell, my husband. I shall miss you. I shall not forget you. <laughs> In the name of our Lord, bless Alexander the First. May be we blessed by his holy son, his sweet holy the Lord, and his mother, virgin mother. By all the angels, will so be blessed upon you. O holy son of God, holy son and Lord of Scotland, may you be blessed, Alexander the First. Virtuitus Santius, Criminalunisius, Bethartius, Abartius, and all issues. Very good. Now, he's out of the picture. I'm gonna make sure that you will be soon out of this country. Don't worry, John. As soon as I will capture you, this soon country will be mine. And that all, as the people, will be bound to me. The new king of Scotland. That will be me. <laughs> I, Edward Longshanks. And Scotland will soon be mine. So what happened then? John Balliol was then imprisoned. King Edward Longshanks used him as a puppet. He then thought, well, you know, he was a doll. After John Balliol was imprisoned and captured by the Englishman, he was sitting in Tunnel in the Tower of London until he was fled while being banished in France. We then had a new king, Robert de Bruce, who was one of the new other Scottish clans. He would soon be in land and lead the English the Scottish, the Scottish people into a new war. But as soon as he came power, 
A major big crisis came over of Scotland. It looks, it was like fear and shadow spread across the island. And a new enemy was coming to our country. As whisperers of, an, of the night sounded everywhere to warn us about a new threat that was coming. And surely we all will stand up as he, the almighty Scottish giant, will rise up. And even soon, he will lead with, with the other commander, Knight Andrew Moray and James Douglas, the two commanders of the Scottish army. He will lead them into battle, and he will kill every Englishman in its way until all Scotland will be liberated. And that's the second part. Let me tell you how William Wallace was looked like. Rumors and even people tales spread across the islands about the Scottish mythical giant. His, his shoulders and arms were strong and bright like trees and his man and horse alike. With his long pointy sword and his little long thick hair and a thick beard. We know his name, of course. William Wallace killed every Scottish knight and soldier that stood in his way. It was not now that he would be won and even get a nickname, Nightmare of the Englishman. You can only ask yourself, how could he be so strong and so long? He was six inches high. One meter eighty, and his sword was even so long, one eight, meter eighty long Claymore sword that strikes and is sharp like a teeth of a tiger, and even pointy like a shark in his mouth that sticks stabs in every heart of Eng- every Englishman. This is who William Wallace was. God is mythical giant himself. And he will soon show his muscles and his courage, loyalty, and patriotism to the Scottish people and all of Scotland until the king will realize what he has done to his country. No Englishman were, was safe. Every time he heard his name, he will run and flee away from him. When Wallace was coming, every Englishman was running for their life. All of them would be died if they would see him and see the blood on his sword, English blood on his Scottish sword. And he would know his time is coming.